What if I told you that there's a good chance you're using vector search every day without even realizing it? Maybe you saw a product on social media, but the name of it is gone forever. You'll never remember, but you're able to describe what it looks like. So you type that in and lo and behold, there it is. The Swift Cleaner 3000, the vacuum of all vacuums. Or maybe you heard a new song, and unlike the Swift Cleaner 3000, the chorus might be in your head forever. You want to know who's responsible for causing this headache, so you search the lyrics of the chorus and track down the culprit. These are all examples of vector search, a technology that searches through billions of semantically similar or related items to get you the answers you need. Beyond searching for a song or vacation, which are equally important, vector search is invaluable for businesses. For example, you can help your colleagues search for relevant documentation, find subject matter experts, and discover use cases across teams. And for your customers, you can help them quickly find similar products through conversations and recommendations. So clearly vector search is pretty awesome, but how the heck do you use it? It's not as complicated as you may think. Luckily for you, Vector Search is available for developers on Vertex AI, Google's unified AI development platform. Sounds fancy. Let's check it out. There are three ways to set up a vector search project. If coding isn't your thing, that's totally okay. You can simply use the UI. If you're into code, that's great too. You can use APIs and Vertex AI notebooks. And if you prefer a little of each, but light on the code, you can use the command line with G Cloud. In this video, we're gonna focus on the no code and code based approaches. Okay, it's Vertex AI time. Let's jump in. Let's start by navigating to Vector Search, which is currently located under the Deploy and Use tab. I say currently because AI tools are changing incredibly fast, so there's a chance it could move in the future. But for now, it's here. Now you'll notice two menus, one for indexes and one for index endpoints. We're gonna walk you through how to create a new index, so let's click on index. Okay, the first few fields are self-explanatory. So let's add a name, a description, and a region. And then let's determine the search algorithm. There's a couple different algorithms to choose from. Tree AH, what a great name for an algorithm, is the default. It's fast, scalable, and used in a production environment. Tree AH is based on ANN, which stands for Approximate Nearest Neighbor. Approximate Nearest Neighbor is basically what it sounds like, neighbors that are close by. In this case, data points are the neighbors, and the ANN technique finds points that are close to a query point. As an alternative to tree AH, you can use brute force, which I promise is a lot less intense than it sounds. Based on a linear search, it's straightforward, but less performant, especially when the data size becomes large. Brute force is more commonly used during development. Next, let's configure the dimensions of our embeddings and the approximate number of neighbors. Dimensions are basically the characteristics of a word. How would you describe it? Okay, now let's decide if we want to retrieve the query result with batch or stream. And finally, let's specify the shard size. Shards are equally sized pieces of index data. A pane of glass is like your index data, and when you shatter it, if by some miracle each piece of glass is of equal size, well, those are your shards. There's some advanced options as well, but we're going to keep this at a high level for now, so Let's click Create, and then we wait, but not for long. The creation process is quite fast, typically less than 10 minutes. And wow, how about that? It's somehow already been 10 minutes. And now let's deploy it to an endpoint by clicking the index. And there you have it. We can now run queries or monitor the endpoint during production. You can code the options we covered as well using Vertex AI notebooks. Let's briefly take a look at how you can accomplish this. We can pull embeddings in BigQuery 
by using the ml.embed underscore text function. This seems simple and straightforward, but the results are actually pretty serious. The large language model-powered text embeddings are carefully organized in the embedding space with human-level intelligence and common sense. Kind of freaky, but also amazing. Then let's export the embeddings to a JSON file and store them in cloud storage. That's the beauty of Google Cloud. So many tools working seamlessly together. We can specify the number of dimensions when you call the embedding API. In this case, there are a whopping 768 dimensions. Couple more steps. Let's create an index by invoking the vector search APIs. And this is where we'll select our algorithm, input your cloud storage address, and include parameters like dimensions. Google's indexing service is fast and only takes a few minutes for three-digit megabytes. Finally, we just need to deploy the index to an endpoint. The endpoint receives the query requests, runs the vector search, and the rest is a bit like magic. Thank you, AI. Now we can provide the embedding of an item to the search engine, and in a matter of milliseconds, we'll receive a list of similar items. Keep in mind that this is not a keyword search, but a semantic search. So the search engine understands the meaning of the search item and finds the closest information. And just like that, the power of AI is at your fingertips. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to learn more about vector search and embeddings, we have a full course for you to check out by clicking the link in the description.